So today I thought we would look at automatic navigation link generation in Unreal 5.5. So that allows you to have your AI characters sort of follow, pursue you along some kind of assault course and to jump down and up at all the right locations. So you can see they should be able to complete this entire course. and then make their way to the start again. Without navigation links, if I wanted my AI character to follow this spline path in white, he would not be able to do it because he would get stuck at the first point at which he needs to jump. So if we test that, he'll run, I'll come to the first step, and basically he won't be able to jump over it. And he certainly wouldn't be able to just jump across these gaps. The usual way we solve that problem is we use, if we go here, we can use nav links, a nav link proxy. And a nav link proxy has, has two points. It has a left point and a right point. And you can use that to connect between two two parts of the navigation mesh which do not have a direct connection. But that does require you to, to do that all manually. In 5.5, once you add a navigation mesh bounds volume, you will it'll then create a recast navigation mesh. And in that, there is, a, uh, there is an option to just generate automatic navigation navigation links. So under the generation tab, there is a generate nav links. And if you click on that, it will automatically generate these navigation links for you. And these arrows connect the different parts of the navigation mesh, which are not connected otherwise. That's why our character comes across here and he stops because he, there is no connection without this link. But with these links, as you can see, he will jump as those arrows showed the connection and move across each one of these gaps and up and down as needed. And on that recast mesh, there are a lot of available options. The main ones come under the under this jump config. So where's that? So under the generation, you can turn the nav links automatic generation on and off. And then under that, you have the nav link jump down config. And here you can set the different variables like the jump length, how far they can jump, the jump distance from the edge. So how far from the edge of the navigation, that green rectangle, they begin their jump. You can set what the jump depth is, so how far down it they're able to jump. You can set their jump height. You can add a tolerance on either side. You can filter distance thresholds. So if you've got lots of these link proxies being created, you can filter them. So it will get rid of some which are too close to each other. And by playing about with those numbers, you can sort of create your own, own course where everything is connected so that the AI can just jump from one, one platform to another and complete the entire course. The setting that actually causes the AI character to jump is this link proxy class. So you do have to create one of these link proxy classes. And when the AI reaches one of those links, it will call this event receive smart link reached and from there you can calculate the velocity and launch the character so that he jumps over the, the distance that he needs to cover. 
and that is of the type generated nav links proxy. So if we work through a quick example, this is just a simple level. There's an AI character, three platforms. Uh, maybe we want him to jump across all three and then come and chase the player. So we start off, we just add a nav mesh bounce volume. We increase the size of it. So it covers the entire area. When you add a nav mesh bounds volume, it will create this recast mesh for you. As we said, if you go down to the generation part, you can then click on the generate nav links. So to begin with, it creates these nav navigation links. So the AI could jump off, but he can't jump across. So in order to get him to jump across, we need to change some of these settings. So one, the jump length is probably not long enough. So if we change that to maybe five meters. So now he's jumping a further distance, but not across here. Sometimes the other thing is this max depth. So this is how far below the starting height we want to look. So maybe we're not looking, this is not correct. So we might want to reduce the value of this. A lot of this is slightly as trial and error. So if we reduce the max jump depth, so we're looking at less of a distance. Now we get the jumping across. Again, we'd also get the jump across here. So these are the nav links that have been generated. And from there, he can jump off. Now this will not work on its own. As I said, you need to create this link proxy class because if I run this, so he comes down, but he won't be able to follow us back up again. So basically he's stuck down there because he doesn't have a link proxy class. So the way that you create that is you go to your blueprints, classes, and I think it's called generated generated nav links proxy. So this is the one that you want. Create that, say BP nav proxy generated. Open that. In the function, you get this receive smart link reached. This gives you the agent, which is the AI character as an object, and the destination, so the other side of the arrow that is connecting the two areas. So we want to get, first of all, we want to get the starting position of our actor. We know where he wants to end up. And then we want to create, calculate what the velocity is for an arc for him to jump across. So Unreal comes with this suggest, suggest projectile velocity, velocity with custom arc, and velocity moving target. We probably want this custom arc. What this requires is a starting location, so that's where the agent is, an end location, and then you can have an arc parameter. So we could leave that at 0.5, and it will tell us what the launch velocity is. In order to launch the, char the, the agent, we need to cast it to a character, because only the character has the launch function. So we can cast to character, and then we can tell it to launch, launch the character, essentially forcing it to jump. And this will be the launch velocity. And we want to override its current velocities, X and Y. So now if we go back and we go to our recast mesh, and we go down to the nav link jump down config. In the link proxy class, we can put this new navigation proxy generation that we've created. Now if we play, let's see how he does it. So he still comes down, he jumps down correctly instead of just running across. And now he can come and join catcher so he can come back up again.
and so now we, and you won't be able to jump down here so you'll run across and then jump down there are lots of settings in this recast mesh the ones that you need by default are often on by default so draw nav links and the rest I mean they are specific to the recast mesh so we don't we won't go into those today but generally for this automatic navigation link generation these are the this is the main drop down menu so the jump length how far it jumps how close to the edge it jumps what the maximum depth it can jump so where it starts to look for a ground this is the max the peak height relative to its starting position is jump height this is a tolerance that is added to the both ends to find where the ground is located and then you can play about with these sampling factors the filter distance so as it says, when filtering similar links, it uses a distance to compare endpoints. And then it will remove some which meet that filter distance. You can change the area class, so you could create your own area classes. Uh, but the key class is this link proxy class. So that's what where you generate the actual jump. So that calls this. And then you use a project velo velocity, projectile velocity, and launch your character. Now, what Unreal says is that some of these parameters, if you've got lots of these navigation links, it might affect performance. The jump length is particularly one that does. You can sort of play about with some of these separation factors. So you might be compromising precision for speed. There's also a way to show. So if you click on the draw tile build times in the recast mesh, you will get some information on how long it's taking to build the tiles to generate these links. So when you are changing numbers, you can see what effect it has on the performance, because that's something you do have to take into consideration. But otherwise, it's a very quick way of providing this kind of a functionality. And when you add it to the default third person map and activate it, you see it creates a lot of these navigation links. So your characters don't have to just follow, follow the paths. They can jump down and jump off. So there he'll jump off. If I go up here, instead of stopping, he'll jump up here. And then he can kind of just follow me. You can jump down, he'll sort of try to jump up here. Sometimes he'll make it, sometimes he won't. But basically, you can now just add these navigation links automatically in Unreal 5.5 and then just play around with them.